Hello YouTube. I was told that a user called Learn Quranic Arabic has posted a video, Reply to the Inheritance Contradiction in the Quran Number 2, refuting accusations of a mathematical error in the Quran. I really commend him for not just pointing others to yet another video repeating Quranic claims, but actually listening to critics and putting some effort into his replies. As the title says number two, um, I automatically searched for number one but could not find anything like it on his channels, so I will restrict myself to analyzing this one video only. Learn Quranic Arabic calls the error a contradiction, where I have shown in my video on this topic, um, well, that the ayat in question, namely one for eleven. 12 and 176 are making plain mistakes. His video does not specifically address a person or a video, just that someone has allegedly shown some contradictions regarding inheritance laws in the Quran. This is a pity, as we never learn what exactly is being refuted here. Because I don't knowingly mix verses or parts thereof but keep them separate, this does not seem to refer to my examples. Now the video has made some allegations against the Quran. I just want to show that they're actually false allegations. Now, what this person has done is he's taken parts of the verse and mixed them together. It says children, but you see that it says waladun, which means one child. That's a, just a translation error. And I think the person's used a mistranslation. What learned Quranic Arabic uses as his first line of defense is that the person in question has taken verses, used the wrong translation, and mixed them. This reminds me of the dishonest trick of claiming the Quran can't be translated so only Arabic-speaking people are allowed to criticize the book. When Arabic-speaking critics then voice their concerns, they call the apostates and that they were never really Muslims and are thus not allowed to criticize the Quran. In other words, only those who prostrate towards Mecca and are followers of Islam are allowed to make critical comments, which will not happen. So what's the point? What is strange here is that learned Quranic Arabic claims that a particular word means one child. When looking into this, I found that the Arabic word valad has been interpreted by almost all the distinguished Muslim scholars as meaning children. Now, it's fine to disagree with scholars as they are human and can make mistakes. But then you need to explain why you disagree. Anyway, next comes an analogy where two items represent individual values but when combined represent something completely different. I will point Amazon to this video if they complain when the next time I buy two books I automatically and unilaterally apply discount without reading up on the terms and conditions. What learned Quranic Arabic is also doing is what he accuses others of doing here. He's mixing orders to combine them. Where and how the accused video does this remains unknown. My question at this point, is the text of the Quran to be taken seriously and literally? Does it say the Quran is clear, easy to understand and for all mankind? Or does it say the text is intended only for Arabic speaking scholars, humans who first need to explain everything Allah wrote down? If yes, how on earth do these humans know what Allah wants and intends? Do they have a hotline? Well, next we have the claim that since verses covering different situations don't exist in the Quran, it takes scholars to interpret these non-existent verses. Obviously, most of the cases that exist are not mentioned specifically. And this is why it requires a scholar to interpret these verses. No, the Quran should just be precise and easy to understand. What happens next is the number two standard reply Everywhere else, it's much worse. And it's very appropriate that the daughter's share are mentioned directly. And the wisdom behind this is to protect the women because they were, um, they actually didn't inherit prior to that. In, um, in the West, I mean, in England, I think in the late 1800s was pretty much when they started to inherit. So it was, so this actually, this command was, it was quite a change because w women were not allowed to inherit. The proverbial tukwakwa. Come on, learn Quranic Arabic. This is irrelevant and wrong. Why would a Quran even claim to grant women the rights they already had? Where does the Quran explicitly say women have equal rights? It requires interpretation to come to this conclusion. Well, a very quick search using the internet, which most of us have nowadays, brought these examples in an astonishingly quick 
time. Anybody could have done this. Now, the line of reasoning also directly contradicts what he states in his rebuttal to my and or video, where he states that in pre-Quranic times, female orphans were married to secure the inheritance. He's talking about a practice in pre-Islamic Arabia, where people used to bring in orphans into the household. And then when they would um, grow up and reach maturity, they would marry them to get a hold of their inheritance. So Islam came to stop this practice. And that's what this verse is talking about. If they could not inherit, why marry them for the inheritance? Learn Quranic Arabic. You need to stay consistent in your argumentation. Okay, so the Quran writes down laws regarding inheritance. Now, either a god wants his subjects to understand something, in which case he should make it precise and correct, or leave it. I have shown what happens when so-called scholars interpret the text and implement their findings in the engines designed to calculate inheritance and how they botch this up badly. What is immediately evident that the topic is simply too complicated for just three religious verses. So why attempt the impossible? Again, a case of showing off and getting it wrong. What is outright funny is the next claim by learned Quranic Arabic that before the 7th century a woman was treated as the man's property and the Quran removed this. And they were actually considered as property of the man. But the Quran came and Islam came to remove this. And women actually inherited wealth. And Islam made the woman the one who was responsible for her wealth. Doesn't the Quran contain statements such as 2, 2, 23? Your wives are as a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when and how ye will. Now, before the Quran appeared, women had their own businesses and Mecca was close to a matriarchal community, just as was the case in other civilizations of that era. Muhammad's first wife had a much higher social standing than most men. Where is the benefit of the Quran? On the other hand, the man was the caretaker. So he had to spend on the family, even his, sis his own sister. If she wasn't married, he'd have to look after her, his mother, his father. The man did have um, most of the responsibility. And that's why also that males do get twice as much as females. Not, not in all situations, though. But now comes the worst part of his video. Why males get double? Learn Quranic Arabic claims that males get double, but not in all situations, though, without substantiating this claim. Where does a woman get equal or more than a man? I have not found a single instance of this in the Quran. On the contrary, I have shown that it is highly unjust of a rich single man getting double the estate as a poor widow, having to look after several children. So this video explains nothing and instead opens more questions than it answers. Sorry.